on EDC Unlocked, Accessorize Me. We discuss what it takes to be successful on YouTube. Allow yourself to fail and allow yourself to suck because it will suck. If you're not able to make 50 to 100 videos and you burn out after that, this isn't the career for you. He reveals never before heard details. I, I do regret you, but it is what it is now. And mistakes made along the way. Let's just push up some content. I don't think anyone's gonna care. <laughs> Lo and behold, I was, I was completely wrong. Hey guys, we came up with the idea for EDC Unlocked because we felt there wasn't anything out there that gave the EDC community the opportunity to hear the stories behind big names and brands in the space whilst also giving them the chance and the opportunity to ask the questions that they've always wanted to ask. For now, this is a limited mini-series, but if you guys want more, then we would love to come back with another series. And so if you do genuinely like the show, please smash a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and please just shoot us a comment with your thoughts on the episode, who you'd want to see on the podcast, on the next episode, and anything else. This 20 seconds of your time really makes such a huge difference, and we'd really appreciate it. Okay, let's get back into the episode. Welcome to EDC Unlocked by Home and Hadfield. And today I'm really happy and excited to have on the show Accessorize Me. Uh, we go across a whole range of subjects, how he got into YouTube, how he's uh, still keeping fr things fresh on YouTube, how he chose his name and how he doesn't even really like his name, um, but also different gadgets and fidgets that he loves, um, different EDC tools that he uh, keeps in his rotation, um, how he sees the future of EDC and so, so much more. Uh, such detailed questions. You guys are going to love it. So tune in, carry on watching and uh, let us know what you think. We finally got here, mate. We're, we're here. We're doing this. I it's been a minute, but we, we finally got here, yeah. Yeah, I think there was a, yeah, you got sick, then I canceled, yeah. and then we've had a lot of uh, technical issues this morning. So yeah, I feel like the the universe wanted it to happen today. So, um, <laughs> um, so we've had a load of questions from our audience, which is great. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm keen to understand a little bit more about kind of like the man behind the, you know, uh, the, you know, the TikTok, uh, YouTube, everything you've built up. I mean, you've got, I looked and like added all up across your platforms. You got close to like 2 million followers, subscribers, and like with TikTok as well. That, that, that was a lot bigger than I was expecting actually. Yeah, I mean, the same goes for me. I mean, the, the, the stuff just kind of blows up, especially when we started doing uh, short form uh, clips and stuff, which is kind of, uh, in the end, I found like it was just kind of what we specialized in. So it's really great that TikTok and YouTube shorts and uh, a little bit of uh, Instagram reels as well kind of popped off there. And I'm glad people are liking it. And I think we we do it really well. And it kind of like, I, I, I almost believe that our style suits that short hit uh, of content a lot better. Um, but yeah, I mean, TikTok just, TikTok kind of does its own thing. So I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> Like it's at 500k, but it's like, does that really mean anything? I'm I'm happy they're there, and I'm happy they see it, but it's like, do do, do followers on TikTok really mean anything? Anyway, that's a whole other yeah philosophy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we're trying to figure out TikTok at the moment, and it is a uh, uh, yeah, it's a real head uh, head fuck. <laughs> I mean, I can't think of any other way uh, to, to, to describe yeah. it. It is um, just tr just trying to, um, but I think you do a great job of it. We were actually looking at your TikTok and and looking at how yeah it's that kind of short sharp uh like changing of uh frames and then maybe adding some humor in and and, and stuff like that and i think it just really goes uh, goes down well um but just um if we could so i went back to like the beginning of your youtube it's kind of like eight years you've been doing this like and it is, is it eight years or is it long even longer i want to say eight years sounds about right it's like eight to ten something like that Wow. Um, I, my first video was probably like eight years. Yeah. Wow. And w what were you, what were you yeah. doing before then? Has this been what you've always done or were you doing, uh, what were you doing? Yeah. Um, so this is, it's been my full time ever. Um, I want to say it was like after I had a, so I graduated 2014. 
yeah. uh, engineering degree. Never did a day of engineering in my life after <laughs> of that. Course. Um, glad I did it though, but uh, it wasn't my thing. I went into this like marketing job uh, for a few months, and then right after that, um, I I started YouTube, and and like one of my videos popped off, and I was like, all right, maybe I'll give this a try uh, for a few months, give it a year. I you know I lived at home, I had no bills. I had no responsibilities, so it was like I had no loss. And it, at the back of my mind, I had an engineering degree, so if I really wanted to go back to the job market, I always had that as like in my back pocket. Um, and luckily, I didn't have to, and luckily, I, I you know, not luckily, but I'm thankful that I didn't have to. Um, and then ever since, like it's just been growing from there, and I'm happy that um, you know people just like what I make. So yeah, no, definitely. Um, I I always think like someone starting you know, what you started, did you actually think I can make money out of this? Or is it kind of just started out as like, I'll try to see what happens and then you'll just, I'll just feel it out. Yeah. When I, when I first started, it was, um, it was it, money wasn't the thing on my mind. Cause I honestly, I didn't think I could make money off of it. And I wasn't really sure how to make money off it for a really long time. Um, the only thing I knew was YouTube would pay you if you had, you had a lot of views. So that's kind of what everyone strived for. Um, you get a lot of views, you get some ad tense money. And, uh, that, that was kind of what I was bankrolling on. Um, and then one day, I think it was two or three years into it. I'd maybe uh, either, it was either 10 K or 50 K I was, I was up there and I, and someone had reached out, a brand had reached out and said, we'll, we'll pay you X amount of money to promote our product. And I'm like, Oh, <laughs> brands do that. I was going to do that for free. You know, that, that's kind of like <laughs> what I do. But and then, and these brands come to me and, and start offering these like sponsorship deals I'd never heard of. And I think back in the day, it wasn't as popular as it is now. Like nowadays, it's like, if you're not doing a sponsored deal, are you really making content kind of thing? <laughs> um, so nowadays it's just like, it's everywhere. But back in the day, it's like, nobody knew about it. And if you were doing it, it was in that phase of like, you seemed like a sellout. So it was, it was kind of a gray area of like, oh, is this guy selling out? He's taking money now. Because YouTube back in the day used to be very organic, natural. It was just like someone talking to a camera and like, you know, connecting with the audience. Nowadays, it's, it's a business for everyone. So um, yeah, I mean, it was two to three years until I started to realize uh, <laughs> companies pay you for this stuff. And, and that's when it kind of, that's when I really took off in the sense of like, okay, this is what I'm doing full time now. And this, I'm, I guess I can call myself like a YouTuber. Yeah. Um, but it's, 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 uh, but nowadays I think that that breaking point is like right off the bat. Like people just go into YouTube thinking you're going to get a sponsor. Like back in the day you went into YouTube because you liked making videos. Uh, there was a sense of that, but nowadays it's just people want to be a YouTuber because that's the kind of cool thing to do, which, uh, you know, I, I agree. It's super cool. So <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it's the same thing with um, uh, podcasting and uh, my girlfriend's actually a p podcast producer and she's speaking to loads of people who are starting their own podcast and I think they think they can get sponsors and and make money from, from day one and, and, and I think similar to like YouTube and stuff, you... I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like almost like two of the biggest skills that you need to like hone is consistency and the ability to fail and look foolish and 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 actually like put yourself out there and not not be afraid that you're gonna yeah. mess up a few videos. Would would you say that that's kind of right? A hundred percent. I mean, like people, some friends and just other strangers come to me and ask me, like, how do you start this? What do you do? How do you become a YouTuber kind of thing? And uh, not that I'm an expert in it, but I think the, the one thing I tell them is make 50 to 100 videos and like allow yourself to fail and allow yourself to suck because it will suck. The first 100 videos <laughs> will be really bad. Um, but it's and it's not even that you do the 100 videos to get better. It's you do the 100 videos or the 50 videos to know that you can make more than that. If you're not able to make 50 to 100 videos and you burn out after that, this isn't the career for you. Yeah. You know, like being able to do that consistently and, be, and and still enjoy it, that's when you know you'll have a long-term like career doing this. If you're not able to do that, then you're going to like burnout is a real thing and it's just more and more, you know, uh, evident in the, nowadays, so how many of those how many of those like early videos have you now deleted because you're like i can't bear to look at that or have you kept them all on <laughs> i've kept I, i've kept them all yeah i mean okay. they're they're bad and um but i'm ha i'm i'm th there's a sense of like pride like i'm happy i did it and i'm happy it, like you know i i went through that phase um th there i mean there is a part of me that thinks like oh you know they they're they're good for the time that it was made 
um yeah. nowadays I look back at it as yeah it's definitely there was definitely a lot wrong with it but back in the day um i i could still remember like posting those and being very proud that i i made this you know and i put it out there um but yeah nowadays i look back and i just kind of cringe and <laughs> <laughs> but i'm happy it's there <laughs> yeah what, what, what would you say is like the it seems like eight years ago, a particular yeah, I, I think Instagram was kind of like easier to get. Well, it definitely was. Instagram was easier to grow uh, than like YouTube, yeah. like the organic side of things. It was easier, and so the the entry point was, I guess, yeah, there, there was a bit, an easier entry point into these kind of things. And now, uh, from what I understand, the algorithm and YouTube and and stuff like that is is a lot more difficult. I, I know it is on Instagram with our Instagram actually. Um, what would you say is like the best entry point for someone now? Is it TikTok? Is it um, um, you know, is it something new that they haven't even heard about? Yeah, <laughs> for me, for me, it's always go with the tried and true. And uh, mm. if, as all the gurus and all the you know experts say, if you want kind of longevity, it, it's going to be YouTube long form. Um, I, I was never really huge on Instagram. I understand the platform is very big for creators and you can make a lot of money. I just don't think that's the case as much anymore. Mm. But if you're starting out and like you want to get into it, like. YouTube long form combined with YouTube shorts, I think is like the next kind of big combo. Um, just because the platforms are like, the platform's built perfectly for creators because it pays well and like relatively compared to other ones. But um, it's, it's, it's got the audience already and it's got the searchability while TikTok and Instagram also have that and they're building it up. Um, the beauty of, focusing on shorts is that you can just repurpose the content anyways. So it doesn't really like, there's no like, Oh, I'm going to be an Instagram star. It's like, if you're going to be an Instagram star, just use that content and become a TikTok star and a YouTube short <laughs> star. Like, why wouldn't you, you know, yeah. it, it, it takes all the same formats until they change that. It doesn't make sense to, uh, um, just try and like, uh, chase one or the other, just chase them all. Like the one piece is the one piece of content is going to work everywhere. Um, and YouTube shorts is like, you make good content, like whether you have an audience or not, it, the algorithm just, uh, re rewards you anyways. So, um, yeah. And then like sprinkle in some long form because that's where the real money is going to be made. And, but again, in the end, it's like, are you becoming a creator as a career or do you become a creator because you want to share what you make? You know, that there's yeah. completely different kind of strategies there. And some people just want to do it for the love of it, right? So, yeah, um, and that's like just do it. You know, it's like it, it, it is YouTube Shorts. Um, I mean, this is more of a kind of selfish question for us, really. Just understand, uh, is because <laughs> we've been trying to figure it out. Actually, like, uh, do do something you post on TikTok? Would you just post the same thing on YouTube Shorts, or do you kind of change it a little bit to make it more appropriate for YouTube? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the content I change for me. Like I, I shoot outside of all platforms anyways. Like I'll shoot on my cameras and then I'll export it and yeah, upload it separately. Like I'm not shooting with the TikTok filters or anything. Yeah. So it's not exclusive to one or the other platform. Um, I wouldn't change it. Um, other, unless you like the only main, one thing I would do, at least like in my experience is if it, it is a product based kind of short, um, the beauty of, YouTube shorts and why it's, I think is much greater than the other ones is you're able to link out per video versus TikTok and Instagram. You need to link in bio, mm. right? And then you, that's like th two or three clicks later. And if you're, I'm sure you're a professional e-com that's like, you lose out on so many customers because you're asking them to do so much versus YouTube shorts. Um, within that video, you're able to link in the description, but also you're able to pin links in the comments and those links are they're they're linkable to an actual website so it's not you're not you're not asking them to take another step go to my bio go to my bio click on the link in bio then find that video or find that link this one's like i'm promoting the watch case in this video link in the comments so right. i would only change like oh in the voiceover i'd say okay check out link in comments in the tiktok check out my link in the bio kind of thing like that that's kind of like the minor thing i'd change if i were to change it i don't even bother doing that because uh, i think most people know nowadays um and if they don't it's like they didn't have the intent to buy anyways um but yeah that that's like a, that's how i think of it at least yeah well you've just told i mean uh, it, 
you assume that we would know that and we we haven't really been posting on youtube short so we didn't even know about the i didn't even know about the fact that we uh, link uh so yeah that's one of the first things i'll be doing after this call uh be speaking to the guys yeah. <laughs> and how do you keep things like i mean what what i think what i think i would really struggle with is like how to keep coming up with ideas for uh for like new new videos um uh, i guess there's only so many like top 10 edc uh like videos and stuff yeah. you can do and you know uh i think you do a great job of keeping it varied but also keeping it within the niche that people are interested in but how do you come up with those ideas do you have like days where you're just like doing idea sessions Sorry, burp there. Um, <laughs> no worries. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, the 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 beauty of the of, of doing product based videos is the content is made for you. Like the content mm. is the product. So there's no like other than like doing a like thinking of the top ten list idea, top ten blackout, top ten whatever. The real beauty of that is like your watch case or someone's watch or someone's wallet can be used in multiple videos, right? So it'd be a top 10, top three blackout items. So that if that item's black, it's great. Top three leather items. If that item was also leather, also leather, it could also be used in that one. So it's like, it, it's, it's, it's a new topic, but it's also using the same products. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's mainly what our kind of strategy is. Like, how do we maximize the use out of this product? What categories do, does it fall in? Um, so, so then we just kind of create themes around that. Um, and if we know uh, like a, a product goes viral or is very popular or people are talking about it or commenting it a lot, we'll just continue to kind of push that product in other themes as well or create themes around it and, and just uh, continue to push it that way. Uh, because I know we know it, it, we, it's done well in the past. It's probably going to do well in the future again. Um, so there's no there's no point in reinventing the wheel and re reinventing the wheel and just take what, you know, the analytics are telling you and just keep going with that until it dries up. If it dries up, then, you know, by then you've already created 10 to 20 other pieces of content that I'm sure something else has gone viral and you can like kind of recycle the same process there. Um, and like list videos, just they're, they're never ending and they're evergreen. So yeah. um, like, it does, it, like you'll never run out of those ideas. And that's the beauty of product base. I can see where people can struggle with like lifestyle stuff where it's like day in the life or like, here's what I do during the day where it's like kind of repetitive um, and while I, I personally like, yeah, I love watching that stuff. Um, I can see why people could struggle and be like, okay, I, could, I only do so much during the day. Right. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. I, I, how do you like, how do you, I feel like I, if I was, if I did YouTube, I would really struggle to like emotionally detach from how, like how many views, uh, and, uh, and everything that the video gets. Like, I feel like I would put my heart and soul into it. And then I'd just be watching it and thinking, ah, oh, if that doesn't do as well as I was expecting it to, it's going to really affect my day. How, do you? Does it affect you, or do you? Are you able to at this point? Are you able to like detach from it? Yeah, I mean, it definitely it definitely affects me. It not as much as it used to. Um, it still affects me, but less about like how I feel, but more about how um, if I were to work with a brand or a sponsor, how the brand would feel. Okay. And, and, and it's like, they're paying me money for something that while yes, I didn't guarantee them any sort of performance or I didn't promise them any like sort of views or conversions or anything. I still feel bad as like, I'm taking your money and you're expecting a certain level of result. It's, I feel like I'm failing you, uh, in, in a sense, because I haven't reached a, a certain goal. And not only that, it's just like, I want them to be a repeating customer, right? Like, cause I, I work with you I work with the brand because I like them. I don't expect them to, uh, to, to not come back. So I want to make sure, you know, it's a win-win uh, situation for everyone. So I, that that's mainly the big thing is like, I feel bad for the brands that, you know, pay dollars for a certain result and they're not getting it. Um, and especially with long-form nowadays, it's, it's so tough to like guarantee anything because YouTube is such a different platform than it was even last year. So um, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Like, I take it personally as well because I, I take, I do take pride in the videos that we output. And I think that I think they're great, yeah. and it's not, and it's not even that I think people don't like it. I think the algorithm just doesn't push it to the right people. And like, again, I'm not, I'm not blaming the algorithm for my failure, but like, it's <laughs> like it, it does play a heavy role in like, you know, the success or failure of something when it comes to that platform. So yeah, um, and it, but it sucks that you can't just, like it's. The problem is if it's not sensational, it's it's not going to go viral, and then yeah. and that's tough when it comes to product based stuff. 
Um, yeah. Like if I'm not, you know, living in a coffin for 72 hours without water, then you're not going to go viral kind of thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, like while black oak products are cool and I think they are still cool, they're just, they're just not as shareable, I'd, I'd say, um, than, than that sensational kind of uh, content is. How did you come up with the name Accessorize Me? Like, is that something that just came to you one day? Is that had that always been your name, or like, how did you come up with that? Um, it it had always been my name, and I, I will say nowadays I, I do regret choosing a name, but it is what it is now. But okay, um, it came to me because I, I so I I knew I was going to focus on accessories, um, and it just randomly came to me like, oh, accessorize me. Like, there's too many accessories, so yeah. I can never run out, kind of thing. And the dot me or accessorize me, like the website used to be accessorize dot me and it used to be a blog. Um, I, I only went with me because that was the only domain that was left. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then it became like accessorize me. And I was like, oh, well, you know what? That makes sense as well as a sentence. So yeah. I was like, all right, yeah. let's just go with that. Nowadays, like when I'm like, I'm always trying to redo my logo and everything. And like the, the name is just so long Yeah. because the first word is huge and the second word is tiny. It's like it's the symmetry, the symmetry there is just, it's terrible. So uh, that's why I regret it. So now I'm, I'm always trying to think of like, okay, how do I short form this? Like if I short form it, do people, will people remember me for the same reasons? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I regret it, but I, I, it is what it is now. So that's really interesting because I, I actually look at it as like a really good name. And so I, I just, I assumed you would, <laughs> I, I think anyone looking at it would probably like assume that you take great pride in it, but little do we know you are like obsessing <laughs> over the fact that you, yeah. you, you, you secretly don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I, I really want to change it, but it, it's, we're, too, it's, we're too deep into it now. So <laughs> yeah, you can't go back now. No chance. Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah. So let's get into some of the uh, questions from our audience. I think one place I'd really like to start, people seem to be a little bit angry about the fact that you're not voice, you're doing the voiceovers or you're, you're <laughs> yeah. the, 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 which I think is really nice for you, but maybe not so much for your editor. Um, so I don't, <laughs> yeah. you probably explained this before, but for those of you, uh, for, those, for those people who don't, who aren't aware of kind of like the change, could you talk through like, you know, you used to do your voiceovers, now you don't and why that's happening and, and will you ever go back? Yeah, no, I mean, to be, to clarify, like I still do voiceovers nowadays. Um, okay. There was a time, it was, it was in December, I think, uh, when I, when he first was introduced and he, he, at that point, he'd been working with me for almost a year at that point. And I had actually offered to him like, oh, do you want to start doing the voiceovers? Cause he had actually shot some of the stuff and he, like some of the hand shots that he was in, it was actually him. It wasn't even me. Mm. So I was like, all right, let's, let's go full circle. Let's, let's have you do the whole video by yourself. And at the end of December-ish, uh, January, it's usually a slow time for us after the holidays and everything. So I was like, ah, why not? Let's just push out some content. I don't think anyone's going to care. <laughs> Lo and behold, I was, I was completely wrong. Um, and I think the major mistake I, I made there was not explaining the change in the yeah. beginning and, yeah. and sort of just kind of pushing it on everyone and everyone's like okay what's happening did i die or did i am i leaving the channel did i sell the channel to this knockoff guy is what they were calling him um and 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 to be fair i had been doing it at a point like you said for eight years so i kind of honed my voice my tone and how i say things he had been doing it for literally a week mm -hmm. he had never done voiceovers before and there is i think there is a skill to it to kind of articulate it in a certain way and, and say it so that again, like so people, I guess, recognize you as, as it's become evident to me. Um, so he'd been doing it for a week and, and to be fair, it's, it's been four or five months since then. He's, he's gotten much better. He, he's, he's done quite a bit of uh, a video since then and he does his own works as well. So, um, but yeah, the goal there was like, if I were to ever step away one day, uh, would I have someone to back me up kind of thing? Uh, like mm -hmm. I, I didn't want the business to be, if I were to fall sick or ill, like we'd have to stop running. So yeah. I wanted someone to have, I, I wanted a B guy. Um, and in the long run, the channel would hopefully become a sort of collective of people. So there'd be other hosts. Um, so he would be one of them ideally. And, um, 
it, 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 I, again, again, the biggest mistake was not explaining this <laughs> yeah. outright, and I think everyone was kind of outraged. And it's it's hard to take back outrage, uh, <laughs> even if you try and explain it. Like now, and everyone's just super upset about it, and you, know, you can't take back those like videos that we posted. I had posted like a community post to explain it a little bit, and after I did that, um, some people had come to his kind of a rescue in the comments saying, "Oh, you know, he's in his testing phase, he's learning, uh, kind of go easy on him." Um, and yeah, I mean, like for like, for me, I don't really care about negative comments generally. Like I don't, I don't like take it personally or anything. It's the internet. Um, and, and thankfully for him, um, he, he kind of laughs it off as well. And he continues to try and get better at it. Like it's kind of just, it's almost like fuel to the fire in, in a little bit. I'm sure it yeah. hurts him emotionally a little bit as, as, as it all does for us. Um, but, uh, he, he, he's a tough guy and, and, uh, he's, he's really, taken it with uh uh humility and 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 again become much better since then so i'm happy uh i'm happy where we are now but i'm i'm disappointed in myself for not having done this or not having <laughs> fixed it sooner i guess <laughs> well you know for next time <laughs> to be fair I, I didn't think i didn't, to be fair i didn't think that many people cared that it was my voice that that yeah. was the big thing like i did not think that people would care so much that it was suddenly not my voice that that they would go out and kind of almost banish this person from existence. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that that that's that's my explanation there. What 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 what's his name? What's his name? His name is Jaden. Jaden, yeah, he's, he's so, my editor. Yeah. Um, so, cool. and he's been my editor for the last year. Um, so they, yeah, but he's he's definitely uh, taken on much more responsibility within the company now too. So. So, guys, if you're listening to this, give Jaden a break. He's only just starting out. Yeah. He's doing a he's doing a great yeah. job. He's doing you know go give go show him some love. Go on, one you know let's let's boost him up. Yeah, let's not let us not drag him down. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but for you, it was a secret ego boost, right? You know, you, every, everyone then came to came to your rescue. <laughs> it was it was more surprising than anything. Yeah. I was like, wow, I didn't think. Um, uh, people, I, I honestly didn't think people cared that much. I, I, my mentality was, okay, you know what? They're here for the products. They want to see the products. Uh, yeah. Great. But suddenly now it's like, oh, we also want to hear your voice. And we also want to, you know, it's all about you. And like, oh, that, that was a shock to me. But yeah, it's definitely ego boost. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome to know that people like want to, <laughs> uh, like they want to listen to me, which is great. Yeah. But um, that that's, uh, I, it, it's unfortunate it was at the cost of someone else. But that's, yeah, that's, people don't like change. People change kind of like messes with someone's yeah. head when they like change, tune in every week. They're like, whoa, 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 what the hell? The, you know, the, the yeah, system yeah. can't take it. Um, if you had to take one gadget, one watch and one knife to your grave, what would they be? Gadget, watch and knife. Um... I think the right thing to say for knife would be my latest release, my latest collab release with um, Urban EDC, the Baby Barlow with Justin Lundquist. I love that knife, um, nice. fully blacked out. Um, if it didn't have to be a collab or some, one of my own knives, then it'd probably be a tactile knife, um, a, a Rockwell, I think it's called. Those things are beautiful. They feel great. They balance so well. Um, they're a little bit on the larger side, personally for me as an EDC knife, but you pull that thing out and it's like you're instantly a sophisticated man um, <laughs> for a watch um for a watch probably my my recent purchase was the uh, the omega speedmaster when i hit the one million mark i love it to death i think it's a great kind of premium but not like super premium watch that's like a great beginner watch for anyone like that loves watches and wants to get serious about it i think everyone needs a speedy um but if like for like a daily i'd probably just go with like a like a classic uh a g-shock like 5600 or something like just one that you can beat around and like have a bun that lights up and tells you the time and that's great like that's all i really need I, yeah. i'd probably go with the, yeah, like a 5600 is a solid um bet they g-shock just released a smart version of it where it's like has a heartbeat heart sensor whatever on it uh, mm. which i'll probably pick up as well just to play around with um, but that thing's like, you just don't care about it, and you know it's going to tell you at the time. Um, that that that, that's my thing. And then the gadget. Lately, 
probably my uh, sanitizer dispenser. I don't know if I have it here, but it's called the Gel Clip. Um, okay. And I love, I featured in a few videos, but I, but I like, like uh, I guess it, like I don't think you have to be a germaphobe, but for anyone that's like just after the last few years, it's like you just always want to have sanitizer on you. Um, if you hate touching doors as much as I do, um, it's just it clips onto your belt. You just click click, and it gives a little sanitizer in your hand, um, and it's great compared to like having those bottles. So you have to open the lid and kind of squeeze it out, and um, just knowing that you have that sanitation ready for you is um, is is something a peace of mind peace of mind i guess yeah that's it's hey phil here co-founder of home and hadfield just interrupting the episode to let you know about something truly special to us community is a huge part of everything we do and so we've created a facebook group where we share our newest ideas and get feedback from you our customers to make sure we're developing products that you actually want to see in return, we give away free products regularly. We're probably giving away a free product right now and huge discounts of up to 35% on all product launches. Whilst this began as something fairly simple, it's grown into an amazing community of like-minded people. And so if this sounds like something you could be interested in, I've left the link to the group below in the description. So come join us. It's free and you never know, you might enjoy yourself. Okay, back to what you came here for, the episode. And it's like 10 bucks uh, and it's probably my favorite thing. It's broken like probably twice now and I've just bought another one because it's all plastic and I, and I, I don't blame it for breaking because it just keeps clipping on and off your belt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a little like a Batman for like the everyday person kind of thing. I like so, that. I, 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 that was an yeah. un, I'm glad we asked that question. That was an unexpected one. What, what do you, if you don't have the sanitizer, do you like try to open the door with your elbows if you're not, if you, if you don't? <laughs> I would just open it and like <laughs> never touch anything with my hands until okay. I get to like the washroom or something. <laughs> okay, okay, interesting. Um, someone has asked, how many home and Hadfield cases would you need to store all of your items? <laughs> <laughs> I'd need a few. I need a. I need a wall full of collector boxes. Yeah. Um. I just way too many. I got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I'm using these like plastic bins that are just like, <laughs> and they're all on top of each other. Um. So to get it, put them all on display would be um would be a nightmare. Um. But it'd be beautiful though. So I yeah. Mean, I'd, I'd yeah. Well, let's try and uh, figure that out. Maybe we can get like a whole room full of, uh, of display <laughs> cases. I'll, yeah. I'm gonna write a note of that. We can we can do that for sure. Um. What? what so this is actually, this is a question that I was wanting to ask actually. All the gear that you get sent. And you get sent a lot. Like, what do you do? You have a, like a, a problem with like throwing that stuff away eventually? Like, do you keep it all? Like, what do you do with it all? Yeah, I mean, funny because we just moved into a new studio, um, which is about double the size, and probably the majority of that space is going to be used for storage uh, <laughs> of all this stuff that we get. Um, yeah. So most the, the the problem with throwing out a lot of stuff, I, I never do it begin with um but it's mainly because drinking a bubbly was a terrible idea um <laughs> you, you let it rip <laughs> let it rip man it's fine it's all good <laughs> uh the, the the problem with the, getting a bunch of these products especially in the eec world is a lot of it is evergreen um a lot mm. of it never like goes out of style right it's like you can always use it again in another video so we always like to have it on hand ready so we have an archive and a storage of, of just stuff that we have like wallets key organizers um you know knives all tools and stuff like that because when we do like a another blackout we want to make sure we can pull from a, a wallet section of we can find all the black wallets that we haven't used or we ha even if we have used it we have it ready for the video just to fill up the quota of having enough products in the video um so there's always a reason to have them. And uh, again, none of them go out of style. So it's like, I, I can never justify getting rid of them. Um, the only one thing that does go out of style is if we did uh, iPhone cases or like new iPhone, like those just yeah. go by the year. And then we try and donate them to like a, a phone store or something that, that could use all the old phone cases and stuff. Um, but for the most part, we, we'll keep those for a year and, and then get rid of it. But the rest of the stuff, we just kind of sort of add more bins to compensate um for it and our big issue right now is having some sort of inventory system to know 
uh, that whole process of like, okay, we want to pull this and this and this, and we know exactly where it is. Um, and we just pull out for the video kind of thing, which we kind of lack right now, because right now it's just, oh, where do we put that? Uh, let's go through all these bins until we find it. Yeah. <laughs> which is a, a, huge, a huge hassle for us. Um, but the goal is that we, we don't have to do that anymore, but we'll see. We'll see with the new space. I feel like you could set up like a some kind of store on the side, right? Like these, or yeah. oh, hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> I can I can run a whole uh, department store out of my studio. Um, also, but also to be fair to the uh, the brands themselves who send me stuff, like I'm never there to profit off the items, and and so I'd never want to sell it. If yeah. I were to get rid of it, I always I, I ideally like. Uh, do it as a giveaway or some sort where like some viewer gets a chance to like re- get a reward off of it when friends and family come over and they're like oh i'm looking for this and that i'm like you want to come on in <laughs> and take your pick and uh, you know i'm happy to see it go to use that, yeah. that that's that's kind of my mentality is like i'd rather go to use than than to be wasted um it's a little bit of a hoarder mentality but um I'd rather it not go to waste. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's worse things to hoard uh, than, than EDC gear. So uh, <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah. Um, so someone said, what, what's in rotation? What's in your EDC rotation in, in general? Do, do you have like a, a top tier rotation that you will, you know, they, they're, they're kind of in general or does it, I guess it changes over time. Yeah. I mean, for me, the wallet nowadays always stays the same. Um, the, uh, mainly because it's a wallet and key holder. So it kind of kills two birds, one stone. It's like a Frenchie Co. speed key wallet, whatever. I think they stopped selling selling it, which is unfortunate. Yeah. The only other thing I rotate would be, the only the main thing I rotate is my watch. Um, okay. I struggle between justifying wearing my really expensive watch or putting the Apple Watch on. Um, that's like the main struggle I have. It's like, oh, do I want to track my day or do I just want to feel good? You know, like, <laughs> do I want to wear the watch that I paid all this money for and finally get a chance to wear it? Uh, but, if yeah. I, but then if I wear it, then I don't get to track my day. So it's like, ah, oh, it's a struggle. And for a while, I wore them on both hands. <laughs> so I, I had the <laughs> Apple Watch on one hand and, and the, uh, Speedy on the other. And it was just like, ah, oh, it's kind of a little foolish, but <laughs> I, yeah. just, I just wanted to feel good about it. Um, yeah. So that's the main thing that rotates. Uh, otherwise, sometimes I'll put on a case, but sometimes uh, for the most part, I, I don't wear a case for my phone and yeah i think everything else stays the same like i, I carry the airpods uh, i got my gel clip um and uh oh the only thing i changed would be the sling bag okay and that's mainly because i'm like usually like testing a new one yeah um so i'll try like, like different pocketing stuff and make sure i carry all my uh stuff that i usually carry make sure it fits that um but yeah and, oh and sometimes i carry sometimes i'll switch out a lighter I don't smoke. I don't need fire on me at any point. I just like holding a lighter and like, okay. this is something that's satisfying about flicking a lighter. Um, yeah. And there's so many cool ones out there. So I'll, I'll sometimes I'll take one with me and just like look at it. To be honest, like just look at it. It's like, it's so cool. It's like, a, yeah. <laughs> it's like the, it's like a fidget toy, but like, I just like to look at it. Like I, I don't, really, I I don't want to scare anyone around me with like a flame or anything. <laughs> do, do you, do you carry a pocket knife? Like quite often or is that not something that's normally in your the, rotation? The one, the one that I always take with me is actually a Leatherman tool. It's the three T four. Um, cause it has, it has every tool I need on the day. So it has a knife scissors and, uh, like a, a screwdrivers on the, the mini like flatheads and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and it's small enough where it's like, it's not a hassle to carry. The, so that's like the, the knife that I would carry with me. I don't usually carry like a dedicated knife anymore. simply because I find that, um, I was afraid to t- take it out because in Canada, it's just not as common, I would say, to, mm. to, to carry it. Uh, whereas versus you pull a Leatherman, even though there's a knife on it, like it looks like a tool. Yeah. Right. And it's like, oh, no one's afraid of that. They think you're just trying to fix something, which yeah. is, that's the whole reason I carry, right? It's like, I just carry just in case to, yeah. to fix something. Yeah. Um, but if you pull out a knife, like you have one intent, it's to cut something. And it's like, <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not. so I don't know. I don't want to, while I love carrying a knife, like I love the idea and like playing and flicking around with it. Um, I just don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. I don't want to, you know, jeopardize anyone's safety or anything. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so yeah, it's a Leatherman. That's, that's a common one for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you, you know, uh, that Ra- Raven, the pi- Raven, the pirate, on the mm-hmm. on instagram yeah he did a i mean he did like a reel about what people think about 
people who carry knives and it was like this knife wielding maniac and then he's just got you've got him like just cutting open a, an amazon box and it's just like just doing the most you know generic things on a day-to-day basis yeah 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 that's pretty much all all, all we really need knives for nowadays so yeah um but i do that all at home so it's like i have the knife at home but i, I wouldn't take it out with me that, yeah that's the, that's the one thing yeah um if the if you could collaborate with one brand that you've never collaborated with before, uh, so kind of like your dream brand, uh, who who would that be? Uh, hmm. I guess I should have thought of this beforehand. I I think I kind of sn- <laughs> I, I snuck I snuck this one in there really because I thought someone someone yeah. asked about if you could collaborate with any company of your choosing. But I feel like yeah. it's better to do because you've already collaborated with them, and yeah. And I didn't want to force you to say home in Hadfield because, of course, I know you would say home in Hadfield. Uh, so <laughs> obviously, <laughs> that's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, it'd probably be like it had to be something I, I'm using every day because I'd want people to just use it. And for me, like a collab has to be something where it's like it's not about me and my branding on it it's like it just needs to be a good product uh, to begin with i probably say uniqlo to be honest okay like if i get like a like i, I love their t-shirts like their their u-line whatever t-shirts if i we do a collab with that just like a, a good black outline ah oh, that'd be like because it's like I, and, and then like a stitch like a black embroidered logo on it so it's like black on black so it's my shirt but it's like it's not the standout point of the shirt yeah um and, it, and the shirt can stand on its own kind of thing. That'd be a really cool thing um, just because, I mean, for one, Uniqlo is huge, but also they make great products, I think, um, for that. And that. That'd probably be one of them. Uh, obviously, Apple, I don't know what I'd do with them, but it's Apple, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> if they're ever willing to collab the with everyone. The um, brands. That, they'd be great. And uh, honestly, gel clip. You know, if they're down to collab um, and they're down to make a black version of that gel clip, I'm in. Um, okay. sell instead of a ten dollars it'd be 12.99 there's nice. a profit margin there nice nice <laughs> okay so if anyone's watching from uniqlo or jail clip like you guys got to reach out to him right <laughs> like this has got to be the new deal you guys got to make out uh yeah what, what would you say is the best unconventional edc item that rarely gets mentioned it had to be fidget toys i mean okay. I, I do it a lot. I think it's starting to pick up a little more in some other channels. It's still very frowned upon, but I think people like fidget toys more than they'd like to admit. Um, <laughs> and people like people like fidgeting more than it like they oh, like to admit. Yeah. So to have a toy meant for it is 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 one like they, they, the problem is it's still called a toy. I think that's yeah. the problem, which is like um, a fidget it's tool. Not, it's a it's a it, it's a tool. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a fidget tool. To it's a bit more manly. Stress yeah um so that definitely uh i think it's like it's a category of like pocket garbage i think it's called or something or something a like pocket art is another word for it um it's just things you look at or feel or touch that just make you feel good in, in, mm. in a sense. but it doesn't do anything right it doesn't do anything other than to give you this certain feeling of of you know satisfaction or, or fidgety or you know being able to click a switch on and off and it do nothing is there's there's value to that that that's not quantifiable, I guess. Um, yeah. So definitely fidget toys um, is is probably the big one. I think the only other thing would be, I think self care products aren't as popular, like sanitation products or even just like um, um, like consumable products, like you know, deodorant or like hand wipes or mouthwash or um toothpicks and stuff like that that's a category where it's like it could just be a toothpick or it could be a very fancy toothpick that like you, that you're happy to take on and show off you know it's like okay there there there, there are there are fancy toothpicks that are like scented and stuff i forgot they're called Danson or dane or something um and they're like coated in like whiskey or something, something like that, and it smells great. And there's like ten in a pack, and it costs like twenty bucks for like tw- ten toothpicks or something. <laughs> but they smell great when you pull it out, you know. But it's like you carry that around, and it's like you're instantly like you're a gentleman, you know. It's like it doesn't even matter okay. what you're wearing. You pull it, you... they can smell that toothpick, and it's just like 
So yeah, it's like it's not as, but it's it's something you'd carry around, right? But 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 you wouldn't think of to like show off. I guess it's just something you would use. I think consumables in general is a category that isn't as pop. Like I even think of wallets, keys, knives, and stuff. But like consumables are pretty big as well. Um, gum, that's a big one too. Like uh, okay. if there was a gum holder, like I love Five Gum. Um, I love I like their case. I don't love their case, but if there's a case to put your gum in. That'd be, you know, these are, these are like, I would buy that just because I like to accessorize and that goes back to the whole like accessorize kind of thing. Yeah. Um, like I would buy a gum case specifically made for five gum. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I, I've got loads yeah. of product ideas now after this. Like we're going to go home. We're going to make a, a sexy toothpick. You'd have one customer uh, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah god yeah oh you, you've done a great job answering that question when, so when someone said unconventional i didn't think you were going to go as far as toothpicks and gum uh but yeah. No, yeah you make a good point though like actually like that's not it is stuff that people carry but people probably don't actually put any thought into it um that's really interesting and yeah. um, people there's been a few questions around people so people who don't really have a lot of money and but they, they want to build their edc um what would you what are accessible like edc gears uh that people on limited budgets can consider just to kind of i guess get their foot in the door and start feeling like you know you know they they start to have a bit of a collection yeah um yeah the whole budget question is it's tough because i mean what what what's cheap to me is is expensive to someone else right so it's hard to it's all relative yeah um to the person i would say my one piece of advice is to always avoid knockoffs that's for sure like it may be cheap and it may be you know affordable in a sense but um and it's it's sometimes it's hard to justify it as an end purchaser to say oh well just because it's not branded that, that it's you know worth more or less but I would always support the original artists and the creators that that's the one thing. So don't, don't cheap out that way for sure. Um, I would, I would, I would go to the resources like Carryology and uh, gear patrol, high consumption. Those guys, they always promote some, like that's where I find most of my gear and that's where I find, um, some of the best budget items as well. Um, so, it, it's all about finding and the, the problem with online shopping as well is like you don't get to feel and touch things anymore mm. so like you can buy it and then you just don't know until you really use it and and, and and get your hands on it um but yeah i think i think the best thing you can do is just go into a store you know like bass pro or best buy or um you know any store that carries the items and just really get a feel for it before you make the purchase it's not that's not to say like you're gonna get the best deal but at least you'll know what you get before you buy so don't just mindlessly online shop and and i mean you can online shop and return it but um getting a feel for it in the store gives you that confidence to buy it mm. um and i think the confidence to buy something you know you like is much better than buying something you think you like yeah um yeah and just because i say it's nice or just because you say or anyone says it's nice like you really gotta a lot of these things you really gotta just touch and feel for yourself and use for yourself um and then you'll know so and it, the only way you'll do this is through experience right so you just gotta touch enough things and like play around with enough things where it's like then you know like what you like what textures you like what materials you like whether you like leather whether you like uh, nylon whether you like you know all these things like you just need that experience to and, and instead of just counting on uh, someone telling you to do that right so go to a bag store put on all the bags for the sake of putting on all the bags um and and then you know it's like once you know yourself better then you can spend better like that's that's my advice there uh probably terrible advice but uh no <laughs> no no i think i think yeah uh, uh, yeah it's, it's a it's a good detailed answer to i guess a, a complex problem if you don't have a lot of money um so yeah. <laughs> yeah um what what's the best pry bar on the market um is that something you Pry bars are interesting because even I have a hard time kind of justifying the use of a pry bar sometimes because it's not, not that it's a problem, but like so many other things can be a pry bar 
that that's the thing. So it's hard to justify getting a pry bar for the sake of it being a pry bar. Mm. Um, there are some really cool, wicked designs out there for pry bars, and 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 I and I own some myself, and I love it. But I would never use it. Like I'd get a pry bar just because I, again, one of those things where I like looking at it. Um, because my Leatherman has a flathead that works great as a pry bar. Um, so I don't personally recommend pry bar dedicated pry bars if you're looking for the the function out of it because i actually go with just something with a flathead on it instead that's my personal preference um but if you know if you want a recommendation for an actual pry bar like my current favorite one is probably uh i believe his name is uh nice guy machine he makes this uh key looking one which is really cool and i love that one um that's my go-to um, simply because it's it doesn't get in the way because it's in the shape of a key and um it's it's something where it's like you can whip out it doesn't take up too much space you can show off like oh look at this cool thing i have and it can do x y and z um and then but then you may get faced with the question of why don't you just use your regular key to pry something so yeah yeah <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, I, I, I it's, it's, it's tough a, a, a more detailed answer than I was expecting, so no, I like it. Um, <laughs> um, what What would you say uh, in terms of a watch? You, I think you t alluded to it earlier, but would you prefer a watch to be tactical and functional or nice and traditional? For me, it's it's probably going to go functional reform for watches. Um, okay. Although, like, definitely get get one that you like to look at as well, because I think half the function of a watch is something you enjoy it's part of your style in the end it's a stylish item um so definitely get one that you like to look at but for me it's like i don't want something especially when it's on the wrist that's so close to my hand that's always being used to do something that i don't want something that's going to be like banged up and not to worry about it too much um that's why i love g-shocks so g-shocks are great seiko's are great too um so for me yeah it's it, the number one thing is like i'm not worried about banging it up Mm. Um, like I wear my Omega, like when I know I'm going out and like watching a movie or something. So mm. I know I'm not going to like do anything too intense. Um, but for all the other times, like even the Apple watch, um, nowadays I just don't care about it as much because once you get that first scratch on it, then every other scratch doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, who cares at that point? You try to protect it up to that first scratch. But once that happens, you almost want to scratch on a purpose. So you stop caring about it. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then you can move on from it. So, um, but Apple watches are tough as nails. So like after that happens, you, you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. Um, so someone's asked, where do you see, uh, sorry, I probably should have explained at the beginning of this episode for anyone who keeps seeing me looking down, I'm looking down at my laptop because there's questions on there. I can't remember all of them. Um, uh, what would you, uh, where do you see the EDC lifestyle in five, 10 or someone said 25 years? I think 25 years might be a bit of a stretch, uh, but I guess, where do you see it going? I guess that's maybe a, a better question. Where, where do you see it going? You mentioned that so many of these products are evergreen. So is it the type, do you see it evolving into something else or do you see it kind of being very similar to what it is? Can you see any changes coming? I, I would say it's going to lead more towards it being less um nowadays you're carrying wallets keys you know all these different things for one a lot of it's going to be digitized um you know there's going to be a future where you don't need a key anymore it's just it's all going to be like you know tap your phone or click your phone kind of thing it's already happened with like teslas there's like yeah. smart doors smart door locks and stuff like that i personally love it like if i didn't have to carry a key um the wallets as well like all your credit cards you can digitize so um wallets just aren't as useful anymore like the world's becoming very cashless anyways in a lot, at least a lot of the first world countries uh you know cash isn't really as king anymore i would say so the use of a you know the need for a wallet isn't as prominent i guess um so you know keys and wallets for sure are gonna go eventually um whether it's you know five years or next 10 years or um i think in like you know countries like asia it's, you can already see it where everything's on wechat mm. right so it's like they don't carry any cash like you have to scan the qr code to pay mm. um so that's like we're just kind of lagging behind that because that's the future right like it's gonna happen whether it's gonna happen um uh, next five years or ten years kind of thing um so yeah it's gonna be my like you, there are things where it's like 
sunglasses you're always going to carry with you. Um, yeah. That's just because unless you get like con- those contact lenses that maybe it'll, you know, reduce the light or something. But, um, but in the end, it's just me. You're going to carry less. People are going to carry less. Um, but that doesn't mean uh, it's not like, it's not that everything's going to go away. I think there's going to be new categories that are coming as well. Um, that we're just not going to think about. Um, like, we're going to lose keys, but we're like, maybe crypto gets really popular and we're going to need crypto keys. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like, then, then that's a whole different, you know, wallet kind of thing that people, it's, it's not as popular now, but that's sort of the only way to secure your crypto, right? It's like, you need a hard key kind yeah. of thing. And that's something you may need to carry with you. Who knows? You know, um, uh, like, uh, maybe you don't need water bottles anymore, but you got, you, maybe there's like a pack of gum or something like that, like acts like, liquid or something like that you know so it's like you'll carry less but you'll carry different forms of other things as well um but it, it definitely less than so not a water bottle but a small pill so yeah. every, everything's gonna be minimized i think that that's the, yeah. the big thing nice. um, it's it's how i out the outlook that i have for it yeah i, I I'm, I'm worried about the, the day when you're just like eye scanning everything so when you're going up to the door and it just <laughs> scans your eye and it just opens up and that's the day when i'll yeah. be like i'll have turned into my parents when i'm like i don't understand this world anymore um, <laughs> um my final question which is probably a bit stupid and redundant because you're sitting down at, at, at a desk uh, but what's in your pockets right now is oh, is it <laughs> right nothing right now it's it's yeah it's just it i'll always have my phone on me that's for sure okay um, yeah so i always have my phone on me and pop socket on it as well nice. no case uh for me uh generally have airpods i recently just found this case again i just want to show it up oh, okay right. yeah <laughs> it's a fidget case yeah so it, and it just spins. oh i like that <laughs> it's, it's super silly yeah. but uh i found it again i was like oh why didn't i why did i stop using this this is like a free fidget toy because i have my airpods on me already um why not but this is also like it's just random find on amazon that i was like like if they polished this up and made it like a uh, a high-end product like people i think people would pay for that yeah um i would at least so <laughs> yeah no no no. yeah so phone Absolutely. airpods no, those are two big things okay cool well uh thank you look thank you so much for uh fielding all these questions today man i really appreciate it uh yeah really appreciate you sparing the time and we, we, yeah, we finally got to do this um so yeah if there is there um in terms of like anything coming up uh, do you do you do you release uh, w- uh, your videos on a is it a monthly basis weekly basis or is, is there a schedule to it we try to do weekly, but it's never actually true. It's probably like more bi-weekly. Uh, we try and do a short every day or like a short form uh, kind of clip every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's nothing to, it's hard to say there's anything to look forward to. Because like, yeah. I'm, I, I'd love to have something to look forward to as well. Yeah. <laughs> but with the new space, hopefully it will be more organized. Um, and hopefully we'll have more of a schedule there, but cool. no promises. You know? Cool. Well, for, for anyone who's, who's listening, because we get, I think we get some people from kind of like different areas of EDC. If you haven't checked out uh, Vincent's channel, just go and check it out, uh, accessorize.me. He loves the name, as we all know. Uh, he'll be keeping it forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. I'm really excited to get this out to people. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I mean, it was, it's fun to chat. And I'm probably a little too in-depth on these questions but I'm, I'm i'm glad you asked them i'm happy to talk about them well good thanks man and we'll cut it there that's it uh, thank you so much for that man i really appreciate it